everyone, so today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's very highly requested and it's going to be a kind of talk through of how we built the DIY cages. So I'm going to be showing you pictures of the shed before there was any cages in it, so when it was just a shed, and then I'll kind of talk you through what we did. I won't be able to give you the full details. I do have videos of when we first made the cages and the progress of that. The current cages, I actually have vlogs of us making them, so I have the vlogs that progress through the building of those. So if you're interested in building something similar, then they're definitely going to help you out there. And today's video is just going to be showing you the prog progress of when we first had the shed to how it is today and I'll do my best to tell you the materials and different items we used for that. So I'm going to start this video by showing you some photos of the shed when we first started turning it into a pet shed. Now the shed is actually completely custom. The side on the right is just the fence around our garden and the side on the left is our brick wall to our house which really helps to keep it nice and warm actually. I always recommend if you're deciding where to put a shed, put it next to your house because it keeps it nice and warm. The only parts we had to add were the back wall that you can see now and we began insulating that to keep the guinea pigs warm and the front part with the door and obviously the plastic roof. But of course that was all made before we turned it into a pet shed. It was made a few years back so it's a nice strong shed. So as you can see we painted the floor in these pictures and to you to make it pet safe we used all eco-friendly paint and then we began insulating all of the walls. After we'd insulated all of the walls we then covered them to keep the insulation away from the guinea pigs and keep it all in and we began building the table you can see on the right and that's actually the base of the cage. To do this we just used recycled things, the majority of the items used for our cages are recycled, I think it was an old door or wall or something and then these are the hutches that I used to have as you can see in this picture there's no tortoise enclosure the shed's very very different I only had four guinea pigs back then but of course we decided to change it into the cages because I, Bailey and Pippin did not get on and I wanted them to have partners so we began by building the underneath cage I needed three cages and we wanted to make sure that when we eventually finish the cages they could be put together if need be and obviously that's what's happened luckily I now have one herd of guinea pigs so we used chipboard as you can see and we didn't want it to be a small cage so we did an almost an L shape with an angle to it so that it would use as much space as possible and it had to reach the tortoise enclosure so this is what it ended up looking like I think the width of the shed is around five foot and then this cage where it goes out next to the tortoise enclosure goes to up to three foot. And this is just the raised level that is now the basement to the herd's cage. And of course this used to be Casper's cage or Bailey's originally actually. I used to like keeping my long haired pets under there because it kept them nice and cool because it's, they've got the kind of giant hidey house under there. So this is how it ended up kind of first looking. Then we began adding things like holes for the hay rack, you can see there, and hooks and things. And we made a few different items out of that chipboard at the time, like houses and things. And if you watch my vlogs back, I actually do vlogs on items I'm purchasing to go with the new cages and things. This is what the underneath looks like when we first made it. Of course, since then, we've done different things to it and added things to the base of the hutches, the cages. And here are the hutches being stripped out. This is pretty easy to do. We just stripped them all out and the majority of the material on the hutches was recycled into the new cages. So nothing went to waste, only the things we had to waste. But this is what it looked like. You can see Pippin and Bailey's cage at the far end just here now you can see them on the right and down at the very back is where Marley and Casper used to live and then this is the base the top of the table we stripped the table down and added an old door to the top of it to keep them insulated again just to add that little extra 
bit to the base of the cage and we actually added a lot of insulation to the underneath as well to keep them nice and warm. That was really important with designing a pet shed was keeping them warm. We're lucky where we don't get super cold winters or too hot summers but we needed to definitely think about that. So you can see here we're adding the frames to make the cages nice and strong and everything's pretty much attached to that back fence panel that you saw originally. And you can actually see here, just in the middle of the photo, that's my table, my veggie table, and underneath that is the tortoise enclosure. So here's some closer pictures of what we were doing. And again, I do also have the video on where we made this, where I include a lot of these photos too. So this is how it's kind of looking. This is how the shed used to look without all the walls in and everything. So this green kind of, I'm not sure what the material is, but it's almost like a polystyrene. We used again for insulation and this is all underneath the bases of all of the cages, including the tortoise enclosure. And this is also what we used as the final walling just to protect the shed and to also give them a lot of warmth and also to keep them cool in the summer to keep all that nice cool air in the shed. So this is where the, the old drawers used to be. Obviously they've changed since then. I've got new drawers and I've got a bottom drawer, which is super handy. So this is where we were measuring up to extend the width of the cages. I wanted them much wider than they originally were. We just went what was kind of not originally there because we added the table, but we went with the width of that wall of the shed whereas now the, the cages stick out a bit. If you look at the final pictures, you'll see them soon. The cages stick out a bit when you're looking directly at the door. So that's what I wanted. I wanted them to be as big as we could possibly make them. And this is where we started adding to the walling that I mentioned a minute ago. So same material, just to keep it nice and warm as well as looking nice and tidy too. And this item that we used is pretty hard to ruin. It does get scratched, but it's really lasted nice, nicely in the shed and hasn't really got wrecked apart from being scratched, like I say. Here's what it looked like as we were all putting it all up. And we covered the entire shed with this apart from underneath the cages. Underneath the cages still has that white material. So as you can see now, the cages are much wider and you can see where they stick out next to the door. They're not completely level with the door anymore. And obviously ma the majority of you, I've got a lot of new subscribers, wouldn't have seen the cages before the cages now because I've had them for a few years now. So a lot's changed. And it actually didn't take us all that long to build up the cages. The chipboard was new material. That was pretty much that. And the glass was the only new material we purchased. The rest of the items were recycled. And it took us around a couple of weeks, or three, two to three weeks to design it. But we already had a plan in mind, so that wasn't too hard. And then we managed to complete the cages in two weekends, I think which really wasn't bad. And here's the kind of final picture of what it all looked like before I put them in. As you can see, the there were three cages, so they were all separate back then. Now, since making these cages, we have done a lot of changes. We've repainted the floor with, again, with eco-friendly pet safe paint, and we also used the same paint to paint up the bases of the cages. This is just to protect them and make them waterproof. We originally put resin on the bases of the floor, making them, giving them a plastic coating, but I accidentally scraped some of it off the cages when cleaning them, which is why we decided to go over that with the paint, just to make it look much tidier and add an extra waterproof layer, which has worked really, really well and has helped to protect the cages. We've also done that a little edge of that all the way around the cages. You can see it just here. And then these final pictures are when we joined up all of the cages. So we've got all of the guinea pigs living together now. What we did here was 
We added a doorway through the middle section anyway because I wanted to be able to have a see-through perspex door in that sliding door and this just meant the guinea pigs could see each other and feel like they had more company. And when I was ready to bond them, I opened up the door, I did all my bonding process and they were able to have all that space. And then obviously I decided to bond the bottom group with the top group and we then added the ramp and the new piece of glass and the little doorway, which is how we managed to connect all three cages, which was always the plan. You can also see in this picture, we have a piece of wood that goes all the way around the top. This just has hooks all the way around it and is where I can keep all of my items nice and handy. We added a shelf on either corner. So you can see one at the back there and there's one you can't quite see. And we also added the shelf where you can see the travel cage now. And since then I've added things to the brick wall, such as my letters, LBS, Libu Shedzu, and a couple of framed pictures. And at the back of the shed, I just tend to keep hidey houses and things. The tortoise enclosure hasn't changed much. We pretty much just made a tortoise table and I wouldn't know how to explain how we fitted all of the plugs and everything. I left that down to my dad and he sorted all of that for me. But apart from that, that is how we made the cages and I, I personally just add to it myself now. I add hooks and holes to attach things to the cages. I clear up the shed myself and um, we also added a few hooks to the brick wall. You can see on the left there, just in the corner where I keep my spare run. But apart from that, I upkeep it with painting the floor every now and then and keeping it nice and clean. I tend to hoover it every week or so and you've seen in vlogs I tend to gut it, completely remove everything, give it a good clean and put them all back every so often too. So I hope this video has kind of given you an idea of how we made the cages. I think it's fun to look back at old pictures anyway, but like I say, I have got the Project Guinea Pigs vlogs. They're in a playlist actually, so you can easily access those. And I've got a whole video on making the DIY cages as well. You can see that too. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone.